For a comedy show I did last year, I had to make a realistic and wearable tongue for a sketch, and I figured that would be a lot of fun to do for a tutorial. So here it is. I decided to make a couple of tongues here. The first is going to be a kind of disease looking, nasty, pussy, uh, weepy looking thing that's got kind of sores and bite marks in it, and that's pretty disgusting. I also figured it'd be quite fun to do some kind of uh, trauma, uh, like a laceration or something. So we've done like a torn tongue, which could either be a piercing that's been torn out or some kind of bizarre accident. I'll leave you to make up the backstory, but this is basically the two tongues we're going to make. I've broken this tutorial down into two different videos. The first video is going to concentrate mainly on the actual making of the tongue itself. So that's the construction of the armature and the sculpting, the moulding and the casting process. Once we've done that, we're going to look at the actual silicon aspect, which is mixing the colour, pouring it, injecting it, and then getting it out, seaming it, and finishing it to the completed effect. If you check out my blog post that has this video in it, you'll also find a workbook which you can download for free, and it lists in much more detail what we've done, so you can follow more step by step. Okay, let's take a look at making some rancid tongues. Even though I want to make some traumatized, nasty looking tongues, I first need to make a normal, natural looking tongue, which can be modified later to create all kinds of different effects. As with most sculpting, the first element is the armature, which is the understructure needed to support the sculpt. It's there to stop the sculpt from sagging or distorting under its own weight, or if it gets knocked accidentally before we've molded it. The armature here is a simple strip of mild steel, but you could use a piece of wood instead or some wire and I've sunk it into a block of wood which is itself stuck to a board. I've glued all this together with some 5 minute epoxy resin from a hardware store and that's easy to get and it's fast and it's very strong. While the glue is setting up I melt some plastiline in a saucepan. Now plastiline if you're not familiar with it is an oil based clay and this one is a medium softness clay, it's grey um, and it's, it becomes very liquid when it's melted in a pan like this. Whilst it's molten, I can paint it onto an armature, slowly building it up as it starts to cool down and gradually solidify again. As it thickens, you can build it up to create the volume and the rough shapes you need. At this stage, it's still soft enough to move easily, but firm enough to keep its shape, and this allows me to quickly rough out the form. It's still soft enough that I can bend the tongue easily to make it a more natural shape towards the end. Popping it onto a TV turntable means I can easily spin it around to work all around the tongue quickly. One of my favourite tools when roughing out is this griffin hook and it's a serrated curved tool and it can do both quite severe and very subtle carving and it's very good for concave shapes. I start by softening the surface and carving the grooves on the underside. This is about 30 minutes in now and the plastiline is now firm enough to be smoothed down. A coarse plastic brush such as this can refine the tool marks and soften them even more. And then I can carve some textured lines in on the underside, crisscrossing slightly as I go. Adding thin sausages over these areas will make those thick veins you'll see underneath your tongue. Now it's possible you may never see this area when it's being used or worn, but it's a good idea to add them now just in case. By blending these sausages of clay out, it makes them look more like they are under the surface of the skin. Here I'm warming the sculpt with a hairdryer to soften the surface. This is so I can add some more texture using a coarse sponge through some thin plastic wrap. This gives me a nice nondescript texture which is very quick and it's a great starting point for realistic skin textures generally. Next up I want to add some wrinkles in the tongue using these silicon tipped clay shapers. The marks they make start out looking quite severe but as you'll see they will soften off nicely. Incidentally I'm holding the board that the sculpt and armature is based on in a vise to allow me to work at this angle. This is one of the joys of having a good solid armature underneath the sculpt. Using a cheap bristle brush, I can work the surface with some 99% alcohol. Now the alcohol lubricates the surface while the bristles soften the edges of the lines. And then, because it's alcohol, it can quickly evaporate, leaving the softened form looking more natural. I work into these with a thin tool through some thicker plastic. I can also try putting in some dimples like pores just into it just to see how they look. Again, softening with heat, I use that coarse plastic brush again, but this time to pop some more pore texture into the back of the tongue. Flipping it over, I do some of those crisscross wrinkles again on the underside. Polishing them back with alcohol again softens everything, making them look more natural. 
a little more pore texture on the sides to graduate the effect, and we're nearly done with the sculpt. Now one thing that helps to create a nice texture is to use the blade from a rasp or surform tool to shave down some plastiline into little bits. And these bits can be put into a cup, you add some naphtha, which is commonly found as a Zippo kind of lighter fluid, it's like a petrol fluid, and you cover the blobs of plastiline and leave them covered for 20 minutes or so. When you mix this up, it will be turned into a thick liquid, which can then be applied to the sculpt to create raised textures rather than just indented textures. I start by flicking on a few layers, and this creates the minute buds that cover the upper surface of a normal tongue. The underside can be given some of those ghastly little nubs and nodules that you'll find on your own tongue if you take a look. And there we have it. After a final coat with a fine bumpiness, we can leave the sculpt overnight so the naphtha has time to evaporate and firm up before we start making our mould. As with any multi-piece mould, we'll have to throw up a wall of some type on here to enable the divided pieces to match up perfectly later. In this case, I'm using a grey water-based clay cut into half-inch slices. By cutting these into thin strips, I can then more easily bend them around the sculpt. You can see this being done in my Using Fiberglass Part 1 video, where I use clay to make a mould of a full head cast. The first strips laid against the tongue sculpt are supported from the back with other sausages of clay. Later, cleaning all this off is a breeze with water, because water doesn't affect the oil-based clay. By laying consecutive strips, I build up a wall which is about an inch and a half wide all around. I need to support this wall with some plaster bandage, but before I do that, I need to place some tissue on the exposed sculpt around the back half. Sticking this on with water will ensure that it stays in place, and this keeps the sculpt clean and free from any plaster bandage mess. So I pop some plaster bandage on, and this piece is four layers thick. It's immersed in warm water and then squeezed to get most of the water out. To further support this, I'm going to brace it here with a wooden spatula, securing it at the top and bottom with a little bit more bandage. Once the plaster's set, I can use a flat-bladed small tool and I can blend the strips together to create a smooth, flat wall, filling any holes with more clay as I go. You can press quite firmly on this because the plaster bandage is strong enough to keep it there. It is important to get a tight seal all around the edge, and nudging the clay towards the sculpt carefully means that the clay can touch all the way around, but doesn't damage it. The cooled plastiline is now hard, and the softer clay is water-based, so it, the only damage here is going to come from my clumsiness, not from the material itself. A soft paintbrush with a little water can be used to finish it and create a nice clean join. I had some clay keys on here just for location. If you're not sure how keys work, just keep watching, it'll make sense later. I also added a low wall all around the edge to keep the plaster I'm about to mix all neat and square. Notice that I've also added keys to the bottom of the tongue on the baseboard. This is there so that the core, which we're going to make later, will locate properly. Brushing the first layer on carefully will help catch all the detail. Once that's on, I plot more on using just my hand, nudging out any air bubbles as I go. I make the plaster about an inch thick, and as the plaster sets and begins to thicken, I can neaten the edges with a tool. Now I can tilt the whole thing over because it's got quite thick, and I don't have gravity working against me anymore. I can be quite confident this thing is going to stay in place, because again, I've got a nice strong armature underneath it all. Just before it completely sets, I smooth it over with water, and just leave it for about half an hour to harden. Once it sets up, you can easily pull the clay off and shave down any sharp edges. You can see how cleanly the clay has come away, because in part of the spray wax release that was used before we put any plaster on there. The plaster bandage should come away easily, and it's pretty clean as the tissue has done its job. You can see that the clay has come away easily, and you can also see how the keys which were raised before are now indented in the reversed side. Now we're nearly ready to mould the other half. Once again, I add a low wall around the edge and spray some more wax release on there, and allow it to dry thoroughly. This wax release is going to stop the new plaster section I'm about to add from bonding to this one. It is easiest to lay the whole thing down and then brush the plaster in before piling in the rest with your hand as before, as it starts to thicken slightly. Once this has had a chance to set up for another hour, I strip off the clay and clean it up. 
Doing this before the plaster has reached its full strength means it's easier to do. Pop a couple of clamps on there and just leave the mould overnight to reach full strength before doing anything else to it. The next morning I open the mould up and you can clearly see the seam line between the two halves. By driving a screwdriver into this seam carefully I can pop the two halves apart. One side is going to pop off before the other and this is normal, it doesn't mean that there's a problem. The other side can be popped off easily from the sculpt by pushing it back. So here we have our two mould halves. There is a little damage from the screwdriver I used to open it up, but this isn't a problem. The mould has been made thick enough to accommodate this. Shaving down any sharp edges is easily done with a rasp tool called a surform. Rifflers like these are also good for awkward areas. I can use lighter fluid again, this time to act as a solvent to help clean the inside of the plastiline residue. I use cotton wall pads as these soak up the fluid nicely and they do a great job of wiping the inside without damaging the surface. Tissues work also but they have a tendency to break up into a billion little fragments so I tend to use cotton wool instead. Once it's clean the moulding part is done. We're now ready to make a core so that we can cast out hollow skins which can be worn over a real tongue. The core in this case is going to be a slightly smaller tongue shape which will sit exactly in the right place in the mould. This will allow us to repeatedly make hollow skins the same thickness every time. To make a core, we'll start with a simple board like this. I want the skin of the tongues to be about 3mm thick. So to create the depth, I've used two layers of coffee stirrers like this. Anything that's the right thickness will work, but these were just convenient and easy to find. You can see when the whole mould is assembled, the seam line is pretty thin because the mould halves are sitting nice and tight together. Now I need to lay an even layer of plastiline into each half and using a rolling pin on a big blob of warm plastiline I am able to quickly roll out an even sheet like this. Laying a large piece into the tongue area I can gently press it into place helping it to conform accurately without denting or distorting the delicate sheet too much using my thumb. Carefully trimming the excess off with a thin bladed tool gives a nice neat finish. Once both halves are done, check that the mould can still close up correctly and then secure the two halves together with either strong duct tape or some bungee cord. One handy tip is to use a bowl of loose gravel here to support the mould at the right angle. By twisting the mould into the right position you can leave it securely for the next stage. A quick clay wall is added and supported with bandage like before. This will enable the core to sit accurately in place and have a decent thick base. A quick spray of wax and allowing it to dry and we're ready to make the core. Dropping a little plaster into the deepest part first, tap and roll the mould to ensure that any air bubbles that may be trapped can escape. Then gradually top it up until there's a nice solid block at the top. I leave the plaster for about an hour before taking the wall away and shaving down any sharp corners. I'll open this once the plaster is cooled down in an hour or so. The mould pops open easily and the plastiline layer is pulled away to reveal the core. It's the same shape as the tongue, just 3mm thinner all the way around. The seam line can be shaved down with a riffler or coarse sandpaper if you prefer. Now it's possible you may have got a little bit of plaster which spilled through the seam line like I did here and made it onto the mould surface. Now to stop this from being a problem, I put a thin layer of Vaseline on the inside of both halves of the mould before the plastiline sheet was added. Notice how the inside of the moulds are all shiny? This means the plaster here can be popped off carefully with a tool. By popping half the mould on, you can see how the tongue core sits perfectly, floating in the middle and leaving an even gap all the way around. Drilling three holes around the base with a 6mm drill bit will allow me to inject the silicon in here and also allow the air that the silicon will displace to escape. So that's the mould and the core finished. This mould should be able to make dozens of tongues, so let's get making some. <laughs>